Good morning, everyone, and happy Friday. Happy Friday. Today is obviously Friday, January 22nd, 2021. Um, this is the Duran Cole's Morning Show, episode 9. It's, it's a Friday, so it's Free Think Fridays. It's something new I want to start doing. I, I sort of did it last week, but I didn't ha have a name to it. So this is something I want to do on Fridays. Not really do a specific topic or anything like that. But just start with one and then ramble with my thoughts that I've been thinking. Um, like I, t I tell a lot of people when I'm sitting like alone or if I'm just relaxing or something, I never really stop thinking. So honestly, I'm just going to blurb out loud um, on some obviously interesting topics. I'm not just going to when I say ramble, it's not just going to sound like a whole bunch of confusion. I guess I should make my point clear. It is going to at least sound together. And it's going to sound intelligent. It's not just going to be me talking about uh, coloring books or, or something simple. Um, so just to dive right into it, to be honest, there's a lot of ways I could have started today. But I think the, the best way to go about it to, um, today and see how the show flows is to start with this video I saw yesterday, or rather this podcast. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of the, the Joe Rogan podcast. Um, obviously, if I'm if I'm doing what's considered a, a podcast, I call it a morning show. But if I'm doing what's considered a podcast, I do try to watch the bigger ones, the bigger names, to see how they go about handling their product. Things they things they do they that I like, things that they do that I don't like. Not only do I watch the Joe Rogan Experience, I watch the Pat McAfee Show on YouTube every day at at uh, tw from twelve to three. Um, I sound like I'm promoting them, but I'm just get like I said, I'm just giving you guys my my thoughts. So when I was watching the Joe uh, or listening rather to the Joe Rogan experience yesterday, I, I don't watch his episodes in order. I just try to find topics that I'm interested in. So one of the topics I saw was this astrophysicist named Avi Loeb. He's a, he's a French guy. So I didn't know much about him, but I said, let me just start to watch it. And immediately it opened and they were talking about this. There's not really even a name to it. They're just calling it, um, I, I, like I said, I don't even know if they have a name for it. But basically there was this, what they what they thought was a comet or, or some type of asteroid. They thought it was something. And it's, they named it Amuamua. And after doing their all their tests that they do and just trying to figure out, okay, this is where it came from, they figured it came it did not come from Earth, that's first of all, because a lot of things that we see that we can't recognize, after we do the math, we go, Oh, it's trajectory it came from here. We made that. That's why we can't recognize it, or that's why it doesn't look like something that's from space, because it's artificially made, but we made it. <laughs> so after doing all their tests, they figured, oh, it not only did it not come from Earth, but it didn't even come from our, like, um, not galaxy, our, I don't know the word. But ba basically, it's not, it's nowhere near from here. Like, it came from out of our solar system. That's, that's the word. I was like, it's not social system, was it? Solar system. So, our galaxy has tons of solar systems. So our galaxy is huge, and then there's other galaxies as well. So within our solar system is the, all the planets we know all the way up until Uranus or Nept Neptune. Neptune's further out. And Pluto used to be a, a planet, but they canceled him. I don't know what he, he might have tweeted a couple uh, millennia ago or something, but they canceled Pluto. So he's not a planet anymore. Um, then after they figured out that it didn't come from here, they said, okay, that's not too out of the ordinary. Like, if it's not from our solar system, where did it come from? Because, like I said, they've seen things that aren't in our solar system before. Like, that's not too odd. But what was odd about Amuamua, and I think that name is so funny, but what was so odd about Amuamua was it seen after they did the math, first and foremost, it was going faster than anything that that we have ever created so we couldn't even like chase it to do more tests on it that was number one two every time we were looking at it 
while it was rotating, it was kind of shifting its brightness. And they said on the fold of uh, a factor of 10. So when they say a factor of 10, they mean, imagine if you could do something, um, if you had a scale and you were like, oh, I, I rate on a scale of like five out of 10 or something. On a factor, if you got a factor of 10 better, now you're, you're 50. You know what I mean? You'd be 50 out of 10. You got a factor of 10 better. And if you did a factor of 10 more than that, you'd be 500 and so on and so on. So I don't know what type of scale they were using, but they said that its brightness kept changing itself on a factor of 10 depending on the way it was rotating so and they have never seen anything like that rocks don't just change their brightness <laughs> so that was number two and then number three was and this part i don't really understand so forgive me i, I can explain it but i don't understand the science behind it but they said it didn't have a comet tail so normally comets have these these streaks or these tails like where it kind of looks like I guess fire is behind them and it looks like the way that he explained it is kind of like a jet where uh, our jets and our airplane not really our airplanes but our jets can move so fast or our rocket ships can move so fast because there's propulsion behind them something is pushing them behind them and therefore they move forward um but this comet did not have that tail. So they didn't know how it even started moving as fast as it did. Because things in space, obviously, they collide and all that. But they don't end up moving that fast. So they said it had to be pushed from somewhere. So in the, the, the what I'll call the mainstream, in the mainstream science community, and all this is going to tie in, I, I promise. I mean, there's really no tie into anything, but all of it is going to lead to a lot of questions that uh, nor I or a lot of people have answers to. Um, but the mainstream science community, that's what he called it. So that's what I'm calling it. The mainstream science community was saying, oh, wow, we we can't figure out what this is. So we'll try to explain it with the answers that we already have. And then we'll just say this is the first object of its kind we really don't know what it is so that we're just going to leave it at that it's the first object of its kind and then avi who's the the uh, astrophysicist who's also part of the community he came out and he, he came out and he said well what are the chances that this is some title some type of artificial material or artificial object from a different civilization and he said he got so much pushback and got so ridiculed for it. And and it wasn't like he didn't have math behind it or the same evidence that these people were using. He said he was just proposing a different a different um theory. He said, if you guys don't know what it is, and it's not a comet, and it's not a meteor, and all its light is changing, it doesn't have that comet tail. I mean, how else can you guys explain it? He said, I'm not saying that, like, aliens are coming or anything like that. He said, I've just figured I, that's another theory. It could be something that someone else made. And his reasoning behind that was for the brightness for the brightness to shift the way it did, you can, you can tell what type of object something is by... Um, or rather, you can tell the shape of what an object is, like whether it's a square or a circle or if it's flat or if it's three-dimensional or um, or if it's an octagon or a hexagon. You can tell that. Apparent, I mean, not that I know, but this is what he's saying. He said you can tell those things by, if you reflect light off of it, how that light bounces back. So if it bounces off at a certain angle... Then and you do this at different places, you can tell, oh, this is what shape this thing must be. So after doing all their tests, they found out it must be really, really, really flat, very flat. Um, and then they also figured since its brightness is changing so much, something must be shining on it, whether like a sun or something, something must be shining on it. Um, so his conclusion was it must be a light sail. 
And what a light sail is, is kind of just like a wind sail that we have on Earth, except it uses light to push it. And he said it's not too far out there because we're actually creating something right now. We have the, the technology to do that, and we're actually creating a nano light sail. So he was he like hypothesized maybe this is some other um civilizations or some other entities version of a light sail its light might be changing on factors of of 10 because they you need to use lasers to push that light and you it doesn't have a fuel system so i guess to really explain what i mean is when you have a a, a sailboat and you go out on the ocean if you go out and you just sail, you don't have a, a motor or you don't have an engine or anything like that. And you're just going to let the wind take you. You you can only go. You can only steer the ship and just go with the wind. Or how, however, it, it may take you may or may not take you. And it's obviously if you've never seen a sail, you should look one up. But if you have seen a sail, you know, it's it's normally very, very thin, uh, like a paper ish material, like a um kind of like a blanket-ish material. It's very, very thin so that the wind can push it. Like light winds can can make the whole entire sail kind of not blow up, but expand is the word I want to use. So that being said, he said, all putting all these factors together, it, it sounds like it could be a light sail. Sails have to be thin. The rock was very, very, very thin. Or, or a, I won't call it a rock because I don't know what it is. A muamua is what they named it. Amuamu was very thin. Um, and then, like I said, its light was changing. Just like how wind... Just like how wind... would hit different places on a sail if you were to steer it. And I'm not saying that they were steering Amuamu, but if you point the light at different places on this this object or on this light sail... And you say, all right, we have to increase the brightness to make it go faster here or to make it turn or to make it uh, rotate in this this matter. That is why the the light could shift so heavily. So when I heard his hypothesis, I was like, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. I, I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but I'm very open minded and it ma makes a lot of sense. But to get back to the point I was trying to make, he said the, the mainstream scientific community really gave him a lot of pushback and they basically like hate him now and he said there was this one scientist that said i uh we i can't understand they went to like a big seminar because that's where scientists go to talk about these things they went to like a big seminar and people were talking about their papers and their theories and one of the scientists said we can't understand this object i'm i'm mad that it even exists and he said he just got so frustrated about that because how can you say that you're mad it doesn't you're mad that it exists because your your um your theory or your way of thinking about it is incorrect because you don't know how to explain it based off the current technology or the current mathematics current physics that we use right now you don't know how to explain this you're like ugh i don't i can't believe this exists i hate it when in reality this is his thoughts and mine as well, which I want to expand on in a little while. In reality, you're a scientist and it's your job to be open minded and to take whatever take whatever comes. If if um if like that that object, if a muamua ended up being artificial or or made from a different civilization that's a huge discovery but because you're being so close-minded about it you are saying um oh it must be something that we just don't understand yet and that's all we have to say about it well why aren't we doing our best to try to understand it and that's a huge not only that's not only a huge problem in the scientific community but that's a huge problem in our world period if there's something that we don't understand we automatically feel like we have to hate it instead of one hearing a hearing a person out or 
trying to get a different perspective, we automatically go, I don't understand it. I hate this. It needs to go away. And you can see that in politics, whether you're a Democrat, Republican, you can see that in um, topics where people go, oh, I'm for this or I'm against that. Whether you say I'm for abortion, against abortion, I'm for uh, for there being religion in schools. I'm not for there being religion in schools. I'm, I'm, pro, uh, you know what I mean? You get, get where I'm going, like for and against people don't do not listen to each other and there's no way that we can progress as a society if we keep if we just stay with that type of mentality there's there's literally no way so how do we combat that or how do we fix that that's that's really what I want to talk about or how do we where do we move on from there or from here because even though the even though the the artificial civili or or different civilization making a an artificial wind uh, light sail might sound bonkers or might sound unrealistic to some people, it it's not too far out there. And the way that he was explaining it, or the way that he was talking about kind of what I'm talking about is what the science community is kind of doing right now. He said what they've been doing really for the last like 30, 40 years is they've just been trying to play up. They've been trying to show, hey, I'm smart. They don't go against the against the norms or against the grain trying to discover things. They just are. They get the, the same. Uh, they all the, all of them get the same formal teaching. And then. They just propose the same papers. And I uh, agree and disagree a little bit there. He, he started to talk about the, um, he started to talk about the quantum realm of physics, where it's like they're trying to figure out why things act the way they do on a very small scale. And just a, a brief, brief, brief quantum physics lesson. If you, if you don't know about quantum physics, the way that our physics works up here and let's just call it the macro world where the things are bigger they do not work the same way in in the micro world where things are very 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 tiny like if you go back to your chemistry class when they're telling you about nuclei and electrons and protons that's the the quantum world the the way that our physics works up here is not the way that their physics works down there so they're trying to come up with what they're what they call a theory of everything and what that means is they're trying to figure out not only how does physics is the, is there a formula to say that is there a formula to state where everything always works the same whether it be big smaller and different we can't have or not that we can't have but they don't want us to have a physics where okay this physics is for when you're talking about space and then this physics is is used for when you're talking about um being on earth and then this one is when you're talking about the the quantum world first and foremost they don't even understand quantum physics right now but to get to the point that's that's the quantum world right now he was saying how in that it was either him or joe rogan in that sphere, they're trying to make strides because, like I just said, they don't understand it. And it's known in the mainstream world that people don't understand this. So it's kind of okay for you to propose wacky ideas like something like quantum entanglement. Quantum entanglement is the phenomena where, and <laughs> no, it has, nothing to do, <laughs> it has nothing to do with Jada Pinkett Smith. But quantum entanglement is where two entities are linked together and as soon as one changes it doesn't matter how far the other is it, it changes to that immediately so just as an example if you had something here on earth trapped in a box and it was red and you had something um in space and it was whether it's in a box or not i mean i said a box but that that's irrelevant you could it could be in your hand um if you had something here on earth and then you had something in space and there 
somewhat alike. They're two two things. As soon and they're they're entangled. As soon as and this is a phenomenon that has, they've tested and it actually happens and they don't know why they cannot figure it out. It's only on the small scale though. Um, if you change this thing to red and the other one was blue, as soon as you change it, boom, it immediately changes to red. The other one do so now they're both red. And the way the only way that they've described this, and it's very confusing, so I apologize, but the only way that they've described this is that they're both red and blue at the same time until you choose one. And it's just doing it so fast. And they they call it when it's up they say when it's observed, it changes. So if you're that's why I kind of use the box, because they say that if you're not looking at it, like if you're not if you're not looking at it, it's kind of like, I don't know if you guys have, have heard of this, it's, uh, the Schrodinger's cat experiment. Schrodinger um, proposed, I don't know his first name, but Schrodinger proposed that if you were to, and it was just a thought experiment, and he he literally was thinking of it. Schrodinger proposed this experiment to try to explain to people how crazy they are by thinking it could work this way. And then people were like, wow, this is actually a good thought experiment. And he was like, what the heck? This was not why I made this. But it ended up working or biting him in the butt. But his thought experiment was, imagine that there's a cat in a box. And there's um a rate, there's like some type of radioactive substance in there that's decaying. So you don't know whether the cat is alive or you don't know if the cat is alive in this box or how did the thought experiment go okay let's do it one more time so there's a cat in a box and there's a there's a radioactive substance that's decaying they say that if you open the box oh there's a there's a the radioactive substance that's decaying has a 50 percent chance of killing the cat because it's like 50 50 it either will or won't so the box is closed and you don't know if the radioactive substance has decayed and killed the cat or not decayed and um, and the cat is alive. So without you knowing and looking in the box, they the thought experiment proposes that the cat is both dead and alive until you have oh, until you open the box and it, quote unquote, chooses a state to be in. That's that's the way that they try to explain it. So to use that same thing again, what I was just talking about with the blue and red, let's just call them dots. If the if you weren't observing it, that's the way that they try to say it. If you were not weren't observing it, one is you can say that you put one in a box. You put that okay okay I'm I'm jumbling my words, but I want you guys to understand. If you they do have to be in boxes. If you put one in a box and it was here on Earth. And you put when you put it in the box, it was blue. Just like when you put the cat in the box, it was alive. And the radioactive substance hadn't decayed yet. If you put something in the box and it was blue, and then you put the other so the other dot in the box and it was red, and you sent it off to space. As soon as you go in in said box, and it let's say it turn it turned to red, the other one in the other box that's in space is all is also going to turn red as well and they can't figure out why that happens and i might be explaining that a little weird but if the ba the basic assumption or the basic fact of quantum entanglement is the fact that two things are aligned and they can't figure out why that is if as soon as one thing changes the other one changes instantaneously no matter the distance and it's it's instantaneous so they and they can't figure out why and another one with quant uh they call these the, the, they're called the quantum, it's kind of like how we have force and we have gravity and we have those type of constants. I think that they call them the quantum constants. And the, another one, instead of quantum entanglement, they have, there's like three of them. They have quantum entanglement, quantum uh, super, they have one called quantum superposition as well. And quantum superposition, that one I don't really understand as much, but it's kind of the th same thing as saying that it's in two it's in two places at, at once. So quantum superposition is instead of something just being, when you think of computers, computers are zeros and ones. Like, okay, it's either on or it's off. 
quantum superposition is. No, it's it's on and it's off, or it's both. It can be, it can be zero, like it has kind of four options. It could be zero zero, which is double off. It could be on and off at the same time, zero one. Or it could be one one, both on. Or it could be one zero, um, on off. And I don't really understand how that works, but I'm not going to go too deep in that. They're trying to make computers with qua uh, with quantum capabilities, hence the name quantum computing. And they think that, I mean, it's mathematically possible, but they're, they're saying that if they can get quantum computers to work, that it'll be tons and tons and tons and tons times faster than our current computers because our current computers can only do two things at once. It either can be off or on. And it seems like, oh, well, if they do way more than that, I scroll on my phone and I'm on the phone and I do this and I do that. It just is, it's doing it so fast that it, it seems like it's doing multiple things at once, but it can only do one thing at once, which is why they have multiple cores of processors. That's the only way that you can do multiple things at once. But I like Free Thing Fridays. I'm just rambling. What do I want to talk about next? Um, I guess where I, like I said, where I was going with Amuamua and why I started out with that French scientist is, and this isn't this isn't trying to be cliche or a play on words, but or pat my own self on the back, but people need to have days like this for themselves. They need to have free think days where you where you don't really put yourself in a box and go, oh, this is the way I have to think, or this is the way that, or I can't, I'm not allowed to change my opinion. Because once you get into that form of, of thinking, it can be deadly, and quite honestly, because, like I like I've explained in other um, other episodes, we never know when we are right or we're wrong. And the 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 example that Avi used, I don't know if his name, and I, uh, if if he ever watches this, if I get massively popular and he watches this, his name might be Avi. He's French. I don't I don't know how to pronounce his name. If you want to look him up and do your own research on him, it's A V I L O E B. I'm pronouncing his name Avi Loeb. Or maybe it's Avi Loeb, or maybe it's Avi Loeb, Avi Loeb. But one thing one example that he was using is Einstein. Einstein is known by several several as the smartest man that's ever lived. He said that um he said that quantum physics didn't exist. He said he called it spooky, spooky things on the on a smaller scale. He said spooky things on a smaller scale is not possible. He was wrong, but because he was Einstein at the time in the forties, people said, "Oh, well, he's right. There's no reason for us to look into it." It wasn't until after he died that people looked into quantum physics and said, "Well, no, this is a very real thing." So. Once you start to believe in the norm or the hype, oh, well, if Einstein said it's not true, then it can't be true. As soon as you do that, then you're closed off from learning anything new. And I think I think we, unfortunately, as a society, do that with everything, not just some things, quite literally everything, whether it be religion. Some, some people will go, oh, well, my religion doesn't let me think like that or do that, so I'm not thinking like that, period. No ifs, ands, or buts. Um, another one that people do is um, their family. My family, we are conservative or whatever the word they want to use. So we don't do those things. We don't think like that. Nope. And we're not changing our mind about it. Obviously, racism. A lot of people are only still racist because they, they don't change the way that they're thinking. At all. They think that this is still... Mm, 1754 and their their grandfather owns a plantation or something like that and that's just not the case we live in a different world they were wrong then and they're wrong now it's it's a very weird thing to be to kind of force yourself if you want me to be honest force yourself to be closed off from the world or or to different thought processes
I've never, I've never understood that. Well, that's that's not true. That's not true at all. Because I used to be a very closed-minded person. Um, only because I, and it's maybe, it's maybe what Avi is saying. It's because I thought I was so smart. He said the, he said the science community is having a who's smartest competition or I'm smart. You can't tell me what to do competition, and that's really how it was for me. I was like, oh, I'm smart. Um, so I know I'm right. If I always tell this story to my to my friends that uh like that I met in college when I was growing up and I was no one I in my opinion I don't think anyone looked at me as like a genius or anything but people just knew that I I could do math really easily so in general as a whole they're like oh Duran is smart just cuz I could like do the math that I could do so someone might ask me something in my neighborhood like oh Duran how does this thing work even if I didn't know I would think of the most logical way it would work or could work and I'll be like yeah it works this way and they just believed me there wasn't there wasn't any pushback or any like nah I'm gonna google that or I'm gonna research that they just they just believed me so that kind of that kind of process kind of turned me into the science community that that Avi's talking about I was just like yeah I know I'm right. You guys can't you guys can't tell me what to do or you guys can't tell me to think anything else. And it was really detrimental to to me cuz I didn't grow. I never I never thought anything else until I got to college and and got a lot of pushback from my peers and I would say something like, "Well, it must work this way." And they go, "I don't think so. I'm going to Google that." And I'm like, "What do you mean you're going to Google that? I just told you it's how it works." <laughs> And they're like, mm, yeah, you said that, but I got to fact check it. I don't, I don't, can't just believe you. Like, I can't just straight out believe you because it came out your mouth. And I'm like, well, why not? I'm a genius. <laughs> and I would, I came out to be wrong way more than I was right. And it took a lot of adjusting and it would make me so furious. But now, and people think I'm lying when I say this now, but I actually prefer to be wrong more than I'm right now. And and I'm not just going to let myself be wrong. Like, you know what I mean? I'm still going to, de if I make a point, I'm going to defend my point. But I don't, I don't, I don't ever try to fall in love with one point. I'm very, very, very open-minded now. If I say, um, if I say grass is green, and this, obviously this is a fact, so just ignore, ignore the actual thing that I'm saying. But if I said grass is green and then someone gave me pushback, like, nah, bro, I think it's red. And... I'm still going to defend my point, like, no, grass is green because X, Y, and Z. But as soon as they, um, as soon as they present their facts, I'm going to listen. I'm not just going to shut myself out. And if I can't, if I can't prove my case, I now don't, I, mean, I used to make it my business to try to, I guess, prove people right, but I don't, I don't do that anymore because it's not, it's not my job. <laughs> so that's just one thing. But, like I was saying earlier, I think I think it would be cool if the if the professor and I think he yeah he works for Harvard he's a Harvard professor. I think it would be awesome if he was right about this. And like I said earlier, I don't know if he is right or is wrong. I have no idea. But I'm open to hear other people's opinions about it as well. But apparently the scientific community, like he said, they're not open about it. And he was also being very pessimistic about the whole thing, which I can understand completely. Joe Rogan had to give him some pushback, too, because he, he basically was was trying to say that even he doubt. He said even he doubts that it could be some type of um, other civilization. He said, because why would they want to contact us? Why would they want to talk to us? And Joe Rogan said, well the same reason that we don't have to, but we go and contact bugs. There are people who dedicate their whole lives to go and they study mushrooms, they study bugs, they study fish, and we're quote unquote more intelligent than them. And um, Avi's argument was no, we're idiots because we fight ourselves. Humans are their, their most, um, Humans are their biggest enemy, or are their own biggest enemies. No one, no intelligent civilization that can travel the cosmos would ever want to come see us. We're idiots. We're stupid. 
And Joe Rogan was like, eh, like, I get where you're coming from. You're probably just angry because people are disagreeing with you. And you're like, oh, it, humans are stupid. But we're not, we're obviously the most intelligent. He said we're the most intelligent species that we know of as of right now. So he said, and we know of hundreds, of, if not thousands of other species. So we're not stupid. Like that's that's just blatantly incorrect. Um, but he said we, Joe Rogan was saying there's definitely room for improvement, but I wouldn't say that we're stupid. And the the guy, I guess he started to, to, to hear it at the end. Like he was like, all right, all right, all right, I'm bugging. But like even Joe Rogan was saying, saying that we're stupid would kind of be saying that you're stupid. And do you think that you're stupid? Like you, you've studied all these years of school, you study astrophysics, physics, there, you have colleagues that are obviously very smart, so you know that we're not stupid. And then he said, well, if we weren't stupid, we wouldn't spend so much money on wars and we wouldn't fight ourselves. And Joe Rogan was like, yeah, we definitely, definitely, definitely need, we have to, we have things we need to improve. But calling us stupid is just incorrect. The things that we've been able to accomplish over hundreds of years are unfathomable. And I want, in my opinion, I don't know if this is the first time we've accomplished those things. The world has been around for too long f for us to have just now accomplished these things. Like I just said with about Einstein being wrong, even though he, even though he was wrong, he wasn't wrong a lot. It was very rare that he was wrong. The fact of the matter was he was still able to be wrong. You can look at anybody in our that we look up to in our scientific communities. And at some point that they were they were wrong. If you want to look at Galileo and you want to look at Da Vinci, you want to look at uh, Nikolai Tesla, Albert Einstein, Thomas Edison, Benjamin Franklin. Look at whoever you want. At some point that they were wrong about what they how they thought the world worked. So, it, and that's only in the physical. I, I, if you want to call it like call it that not physical, um, kind of, I don't know what word I'm looking for, but, but not only in that, that space of science, if, if those scientists were wrong in that subject of science, if that's how I want to word it, if they were wrong then, or with that sub, those subjects, what prevents the, the archaeologist and the, the biologist and the, the um, anthropologist, even though I think they only study society, they don't really study the, the our past. But the the all the people that study the past, whether it's a paleontologist or, like I said, an archaeologist, if we're if we've been wrong about oh, gravity must be gravity must be this thing or this whatever however um ne newton described it and then einstein described it something completely different 400 years later how do we know that in 400 years there won't be some type of proof like yo they th we thought we were the first civilization on earth to do this but we've already done this twice three times four times they can quote unquote prove em emphasis on the quote unquote because like I said, we do not know what is right and what is and what's what. So they can quote unquote prove that um, the Earth is 13.4 or 13.8. I think it's 0.8. That sounds more realistic. 13.8 billion years old. So if the Earth is 13.8 billion years old, and uh, I, that's such an unfathomable number. I don't want to do that topic today. That's its own thing things that are just quite literally unfathomable, uh, unthinkable. But if the Earth is that old, the fact that computers and um, and cell phones and, and Wi-Fi, the, if we think that this is the first time that this has been thought of in the, fir in the last 400 years, I think we are just blatantly arrogant. That, that's just my opinion, because it doesn't make it doesn't make any sense. And I get the whole evolution thing. Like I'm not I'm not doubting that at all. But they say cavemen 
I don't even know when they say cavemen came about. I think like a hundred, maybe two hundred thousand years ago. May I? I could be so wrong about that. I don't have the numbers on that, so I don't want to give incorrect information. But let's just say, let's just use those numbers. They're saying that cavemen. I'll just use a million, just just to cover myself. Um, if if they're saying cavemen are a million years old, right? The Earth, the Earth itself, is I can't even. Oh my gosh, one hundred. A thousand, ten thousand. The Earth is ten thousand years old, older than one million years. To get to the thirteen point eight billion years, if if humans are if humans if came and just came one million years ago, right? Then there was a million. There was million years before that. There was actually a hundred million years before that. There was actually a billion years before that. No, there was actually ten billion years before that. So if we just did this in the last million, what could we have done in the last five or the last 10 or the last 20 or the last 50? Like, you know what I mean? You can just go. You can go with the numbers and go and go and go and go. So. I, I think it's I think it's just I think it's blatantly incorrect to assume that, oh, we are the first to do this and we're geniuses and we're. We are just we were just the right civilization at the right time to do this. I don't I don't think that that's the case. And it could it ultimately could be the case. I mean, I'm not saying that their science is wrong, but I think that there's a we need to keep like I said, the whole point of this talk, we need to keep an open mind. I another another favorite of mine, and I could do a whole talk on him too. But so I'll just talk about him briefly because maybe I'll maybe I'll keep that in the stash. But Graham Hancock is one of my favorite. Uh, they kind of they try to disrespect him and call him a pseudoscientist. But he said he he's a he's a, a writer. He said he's never proclaimed himself to be uh, a scientist or anything of the sort. He's a and, and a journalist. He just the things he happens to to write about are scientific. So, one of the things that Graham Hancock writes about or talks about or does research on is past civilizations. And he has kind of the same thought process that I have. He's, he's almost certain that there has had to be some sort of past civilization that was also technologically advanced. Or he, do, he doesn't use the word technologically, but he said that they must have been advanced on some scale. On some scale. And uh, his reasoning behind that, like I said, I want to keep this kind of in the stash. So I won't go too, yeah, I won't go, I won't give the details. But if you want to look, like, look him up and do your own research, it's Graham Hancock. G-R-A-H-A-M-H-A-N-C-O-C-K. And the, the basis upon where he finds that is there's a lot of there's a lot of evidence to prove that over the there have been and this this is actually a proven thing there have been four what we call what the scientific community calls global ca cataclysms that have have ended everything on earth it's happened four times the there's been like two ice ages there was the the I can't even pronounce it the Chicxulub or the Chicxulub meteorite that destroyed the the dinosaurs and everything else on earth um and there's another one like there's been there's been tons and tons of cataclysmic events that have ended life on earth if not all if not all of it most of it i think the most that's ever wiped like the most life that's ever been wiped out on earth was 91 percent of life on earth was wiped out i don't know why that number just came to me but i can see like this scale or this thing in my head where i feel like i saw that before I think it was 91% of life got wiped out on Earth. And I think that was from the Chicxulub or Chicxulub meteorite, the one that destroyed the dinosaurs. But my point being, if there have been cataclysmic events like that, imagine if there was one like that today. They People keep saying that, uh, and when I say people, scientists keep saying that there's going to be global warming I mean, there's going to be climate change, and over the next 10, 15, 20, 30 years, we're going to see 
events that are literally going to change the world. There's going to be storms like we've never seen, and there's going to be crazy, crazy, crazy events. So imagine if there are those events, and pair that with pair that with, I don't know, may, maybe some type of meteorite or something. They always say that we have to uh, fear so something like another asteroid coming to, coming to hit us. So if there was these storms, the fact that we have all of our information stored on the internet and not, I mean, we do have books, but they're also fragile too. If there's a huge flood, all those books are gone. So imagine if we had those cataclysmic events and most of our history or most of the things that we do now were wiped out and we had to start over and it took a million years or it took however I mean I can use that type of scale because that's we like I said the earth has been around for 13.8 so if the if it took us if everything got wiped out tomorrow and it took us a million two million three million years to to come back and when I say come back I mean something like the barbarians not even like how we are now but like the barbarians and then another or the cavemen i always say the barbarians like they're the oldest but what i truly mean is the cavemen um or the neanderthals um so imagine it took us that long to get there another and then another 10 or so to get back to where we are now or another 100 it doesn't it doesn't really matter cuz the scale like i said the earth is 13.8 billion years old so and then let's just say the science, the quote unquote science showed or proved that because eventually, let's say we get back to the same technolog technological society. There's some random kid named George or Joe or Duran or whoever making a morning show and they're having this conversation. If we get back to that same scenario or same situation, let's say that science shows, well, we're the first civilization to ever be able to do these things. They'd be wrong. But their science their quote unquote science shows them otherwise. So that's what, that's just my hypothesis. My like I said, I don't have the scientific data like Graham does, and I, I want to share that, but I'm gonna save that for another day. Um I think I think that I it's it's very arrogant, blatantly arrogant for us to assume that we are the first to do the things we've done. I just think we don't have the I don't think we have the evidence and the evidence that we do have. I, I think it wants to it wants to be ignored because of the same reason that I used to ignore evidence or people telling me they're going to fact check or Google my things. Google the things I'm saying because we want to be smart. We want to be elite. We want to be at the top. So if if it's found out and I'm not and I'm not saying it as like a conspiracy Oh, if it's found out nothing like that. I'm just saying I think it's being blatantly ignored because it it doesn't want to be fa it doesn't want to be found out is what i'm trying to say if it if it comes if we end up discovering like oh we actually aren't the first to do this and we're not that big of a society or we're not that that elite of a society it'll be like damn so i guess we're we're actually not that unique are we and when people people like Graham propose these type of theories people get so angry like it's not just science like i said they fall in love with the idea of something to the point where it's kind of they feel it's disrespectful to think something else could have happened if you propose in a science community oh i think this thing happened and it goes against the norm they're like no we have facts that prove otherwise how dare you which points me, and this is I'm, this is what I'm going to end it on, but points me back to what I was saying the other day in the Define the Truth episode. Everyone thought that everyone thought that the church was so right, and 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 that the Earth revolved. We we revolved. Um, the sun revolved around the Earth, or we were the center of the universe, until Galile Galileo came out and said, "Actually, I think that the sun." that us and other planets revolve around the sun. They put him on house arrest for the rest of his life because he came out and said that. The church said he's going to be a nuisance to society and people are going to start to believe this her these, these heretics. So we're, we can't kill him because the community loves him. We're going to put him on house arrest for the rest of his life because he said something that was true, but they didn't believe at the time. 
I think right now our civilization is no different. Boom. Bring me questions. What do you guys got for me today? We got 10 minutes left. I probably got two or three good questions in me. You guys know the deal by now. We're at episode nine. Good morning. We're at episode nine. If you want to introduce yourself, go right ahead. If not, um, you don't have to. This is being recorded and posted on YouTube. It's my duty to let you know that. All right, go ahead. Okay, yeah, it's Preston. Uh, I've been on here a couple of times, so hopefully everyone knows who I am. Um, I wanted to bring up kind of like what you said about, like, you know, people telling their truth. It's like something that I think of all the time is like, you know, like, like the pyramids, for example. Um, I think that a lot of times people will create like a different reality because accepting something, like you said, accepting something else just goes against what they believe so much. And like, it's interesting how like the pyramids, for example, like all these, all these great Western scientific institutions can't fathom how these pyramids were built. So they're like, yeah, it's gotta be aliens. And part of me is like, all right, that's it's a little far fetched. But then at the same time, I'm wondering, like, all right, if there was really aliens that came to Earth, they're probably sophisticated enough to make it look like they've never been here, you know? And uh, I think for me, it's like that's like always a big question in regards to like, is there life out there? There's like all these theories that like there are aliens living amongst us already and things and things like that. Um. And um, I think, like, kind of like what you said with the church, where they're like, yeah, like, he's telling people these things and people will believe him, like, that's going to destroy society. I think there's a good possibility that, like, if there was aliens, like, the government just wouldn't tell us because they'd be like, yo, like, people will go crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. There's actually a, a big theory on that right now. I don't know if you if you guys have seen the government has been um since july actually this july was it last it might have been last year but i'm almost positive it was this july yeah um this year 2020 was so long that i confused what things happened in 2019 and 2020 in july of 2020 the government released uh these very very classified uh um videos of what they're calling unidentified objects they have no idea what they are so they feel like it was in the public's interest to to know that they have these videos. And just, I think it was two or three days ago, they just released more, like, uh, thing, uh, more things that they don't under completely understand and that has to do with, like, extraterrestrial life and things like that. So there's actually a huge theory going on right now that they think they being who I, who, I don't know who made this, but I heard this one on the Joe Rogan podcast as well. But I, this wasn't from the same episode. There's a huge theory going on right now that says um, they think that something must have been found, but the government can't come out and say, hey, we found this. Um, like we, They can't just blatantly come out and say, yo, we found this. Here it is. The aliens are among us. So they're doing it very, very, very gradually. They released something in July. They release something in September. They release like if they do it gradually and they they kind of do it under the radar. Like I didn't hear about this on the news or anything like that. I um I heard about it. I think from like the Pat McAfee show. They were just memeing about it. like yo. Did you see that the, that NASA or the NSA released these things about the um the aliens? So it's not something that's become there that's mainstream. And I think that's being done on purpose. And. I don't want to sound like a conspiracy theory wacko or something like that, but I think that something could have been found and they can't disclose it or it's they think it's not going to be positive to disclose it outright and say, yo, we found this. There's light, there's aliens among us. Do with this information what you will, because there would probably be mass hysteria. So they're doing it very gradually. Like, yo, we found this plane. Okay, and then I, I haven't looked at the new report, so this next thing is um is a is a meme. But we found this hand, and then the next thing they might come out in June or Ju the next July and say we found this leg. You know what I mean? So I think that they're doing it gradually. Um, but just to quickly, uh, 
do I want to? Yeah, just to quickly talk about the Egypt thing, because I, I want to allow one more question to touch on the Egypt thing. It could have been aliens, which I doubt. But like you said, there's also the ability uh, that if they were able to get here, they probably could mask it as well. Um, but on top of that, it could have just been some type of ancient civilization. I think we are ignorant and arrogant to think that we are the only ones that could come up with structures like this. They're like, yo, there's no way that people back then could have come up with structures like this. It's impossible. Why is it so impossible? Maybe they're smarter than what we thought, and and that's literally the only answer. I mean, that doesn't take some form of aliens coming and giving them directions or whatever. It's just they were smarter than what we thought, and they could create these things. They're like, yo, these um these stones came from miles away, and they didn't have the technology back then to do this, and yada yada. Who says who? says who they maybe it's some technology that we don't understand or that we don't deem in today's civilization as as advanced but just because we, just because we don't deem it as that doesn't mean that it wasn't you know what i mean yeah i think like you said um i think a lot of it has to do with the westernization of like history where the, the world kind of even with science for example kind of follows this like Eurocentric model of history and science and like how things are. So because, because those things are so established, it's like if it's not credible in those spaces, it's not credible at all. Yeah. So like you said, very well it could because Egypt is in Africa. Like there could have been some great like en African engineers and scholars who like came up with some next level plans to build these pyramids. And yeah, like the uh, you know, these Eurocentric uh, history ideologists are kind of like, they're just not having that. There's like, there's no way they came up with this. And like, we didn't come, we couldn't come up with something like that. Like, they must have been aliens. Exactly. And I think that, I think it really hurts their pride that to this day, I mean, it's 2021 and they still can't figure out how the um, the pyramids were built. And I think that that is, is crazy. All right. We have any other questions before I, um, if there's, if there's any other questions, I'll keep going. If not, I'll wrap it up here. And I will let you guys get to this beautiful Friday. I feel good today, guys. All right, I will wrap it up here. Oh, Preston got something, something else to say. What you got, Preston? To uh, chime in about this real quick. Um, in regards to what we're talking about, just going back to the topic of um, aliens, I think that, you know, I think that people are also under the impression that if something was true, it would be covered in the media, right? But the problem with that is, is it's like, everything that's in media, is, it's about dollars. And no news organization wants to be the first one to publish these stories about aliens, extraterrestrial life, and what have you, because... One, if you're the only one taking the risk and doing it, they could just blow up their credibility. Like, imagine how people would look at CNN if CNN was like, yeah, like, there's aliens. And, like, no other news station was talking about it because they're like, yo, people aren't going to believe this. Yeah. You know what I mean? And because of that, those news organizations will talk about it. But there's plenty of things and technological inf uh, innovations that we've come across that, like, you don't hear about. Like, you know, for the longest time, even today, like, people think the concept of turning lead into gold is, like, something out of fiction or, like, you know, Penguins watch anime like Full Metal Alchemist, right? It's like that's like the alchemist's dream to turn lead into gold. But we've done we've done that, and we can do that. And like, granted, I I don't think it became mainstream information because in doing so, we found out the process and the amount of energy required to transform lead into gold isn't worth the gold that you output. So it's like, yeah, we can do it, but it's not it's not worth it. And I think because of that, like stuff like that, that sounds like super supernatural, right? Yeah, well, we've done it, and like I haven't seen it in the news at all. Most people, I would say, ninety nine percent of people don't even know that we can do it. That we've already done it, and I think that would be the same thing with like the alien stuff. Like, if the CIA does come out and they're like, "Yeah, like aliens are real," no one's gonna put that on the news. That's true. Yeah, I mean, you're one hundred percent right, and I I think a point that you said earlier 
it really stands out. Um, people look to the media for things to be true, but what they don't realize is things, not all things, but most things in the media are actually false. <laughs> so on that note, I'll wrap it up there. And this is the end of episode nine, my first free drink Friday. I'll see you guys on Monday. Have a beautiful weekend. All right. See you later.